Tuliambali nguli Uru talu ngalu vidi Tuliambali nguli Tuli vimba muyu gandi mbya Uru gamba kururiwa Turi ajwari chirunga Turi ajwari chirunga Turi ajwari chirunga Uru gamba kururawi Turi ajwari chirunga Tushe mereru miugande nsia When the struggle is over We shall wear the victor's crown We shall wear the victor's crown We shall wear the victor's crown When the struggle is over We shall wear the victor's crown In a new Uganda People power is our power Our power, people power Fellow Ugandans I greet you all in the name of the Almighty God. I am very grateful to finally have the opportunity to address you, even though my home is still surrounded by soldiers and the military. I am indeed under house arrest, and I continue to live through these indignities and this humiliation. But my spirit is very strong, and I hope you comrades out there are strong too. I'm indeed under illegal house arrest. I am strong though because I'm aware of the trials and tribulations that those that came before us had to go through in their fight for freedom and democracy. I am further consoled by the constant reminder in me that what I'm going through today is nothing compared to what other comrades have had to go through for the past three years since we started the People Power Movement. As all Ugandans know, ladies and gentlemen, many comrades are now dead. Many are in hospitals nursing wounds of torture, while very, very many are in prison for standing for what is right. We salute you, brothers, and you continue to be the reason why we don't give up, why we persevere on. Fellow Ugandans, today I stand before you to make my first address since the 14th day of January when the people of Uganda went for elections. Which elections? You all know that we won resoundingly. Which elections? General Museveni, together with Mr. Biabakama and other machinations of state mainly the military, rigged with impunity, and which is the reason why I am under house arrest today. I must state right from the beginning, ladies and gentlemen, that we went into this election knowing the nature of regime that we are dealing with. However, we went into this election having our confidence in the people of Uganda. Our confidence was indeed uh, the trust that we had and still have in the power of the people of Uganda and their ability to assert their voices. And in, they indeed asserted their voices. All of us had and failed their voices. Like many dictators, Museveni organizes elections in order to pay lip service to democracy and to try to buy legitimacy from the world, especially the outside world. So this time he was determined to take the nation through the same old ritual but unfortunately, he gravely miscalculated this time round. The question we have been getting from some people has always been, why participate in an election that we know has already been rigged. We participated in this election like Abolo has been saying to the people of Uganda because we have the confidence in the power of the people of Uganda. We participated in this election because we believe that the people of Uganda 
can speak loud and clear. We saw they spoke. So today, ladies and gentlemen, I stand before you to thank you for turning out in unprecedented numbers and yes, for voting for change. Mr. Vyabakama and his electoral commission are still struggling to downplay the turn up of the people of Uganda for elections. But even a blind person can deal with for the last 35 years. I want to thank you, ladies and gentlemen, because you did that. You voted for change. You voted for us. We know that and we indeed appreciate that. Let me also appreciate my fellow presidential candidates for putting their foot forward, but most importantly, for rejecting the Museveni fraud. Therefore, fellow citizens, I speak to you today with a heart so grateful and with so much confidence. The confidence that you gave us when you chose the National Unity Platform and when you chose me to be your leader in the new Uganda. Unfortunately, yet again, General Museveni committed a coup against the Constitution and against the people of Uganda. By 6 p.m. on the day of voting, it was very clear across the country that despite the rigging, despite the widespread irregularities, Museveni was defeated resoundingly. From the east to the west, from the north to the south and central, it was very, very clear that the people of Uganda had rejected the Museveni dictatorship and they had chosen a new Uganda. Unfortunately, Museveni is such a poor student of history, including his own history. In a mission, in a book titled Mission to Freedom, written by himself, Museveni justified his decision to go to the bush and wage a violent war as follows. He said, and I quote, In December 1980, Ugandans went to the polls. By late afternoon on December 11, it was clear that UPC and Obote were headed for a resounding defeat. In spite of all the rigging that he had done earlier, it was clear that the UPC was losing. They had rigged right from the start right from the stages of registration of voters, nomination of candidates, demarcation of electoral boundaries, ETC. The UPC was seized with panic. Paulo Mwanga took over the powers of the Electoral Commission. The following day, 12 December 1980, using their control of the national radio, the army, the police, and other state machinery, and backed by the Tanzanian government, Obote and Mwanga announced their coup. Once again, a minority and popular clique was imposed on the people of Uganda, leaving them with no option but to take up arms in defense of their democratic rights. This was Museveni speaking. This was him, and we are here yet again. Just replace the actors, remove the others, put Museveni, Yabakama, and the like, and it will become alive again. Throughout the campaign period, ladies and gentlemen, people of Uganda generally, and more particularly, my supporters and myself endured untold suffering, torture, degrading and inhuman treatment, and all this was on the orders of General Museveni. This included but not limited to the dark days of the 18th and 19th of November, where more than 100 innocent unarmed citizens of Uganda were murdered. General Museveni would later brag about these cold murders, and his executioner, General Tumwine, indeed said that they were ready to kill some more. He said, comply, comply, comply. Corporate, corporate, corporate. Those were his words. He indeed went ahead and said the police has a right to murder citizens. I'm very glad that all this has gone on record. Not just by me, but by the entire world. Fellow citizens, 
when I was nominated to run for president, I informed the nation that this was not just a mere election. I told you that this was a revolution. And I want to tell you today, ladies and gentlemen, that the revolution is going on and nothing, absolutely nothing, will stop this revolution of the people. The regime is desperate to close this chapter and pretend that everything has moved on. But I will tell them today, this is just the beginning. We are removing a dictator and we are not going to rest until we accomplish this mission. The people of Uganda had every reason to fight for freedom and now they have an even bigger reason to fight. Their victory was stolen and they will not give up until they defend their victory because it was stolen in daylight. The people of Uganda are not fools and certainly not this generation. Like most national and international bodies have noted, this election was marred with massive irregularities, including state-inspired violence, intimidation, harassment of my supporters, myself, and other opposition candidates. There was a lot of ballot, ballot stuffing with pretty ballot papers in favor of General Museveni. There was alteration of declaration of result forms. The confiscation of declaration forms from our agents by security personnel. The flawed tallying processes, ETC, ETC, in many districts across the country, our agents were picked up from polling stations. And up to now, very many of them are not known where they are detained. They are still missing. Amidst all this, General Museveni switched off the internet and he ordered the local media not to broadcast the incidences of irregularities and incidences of human rights violations and to complete all their immoral scheme and to cover up all this evil. <laughs> They immediately placed me under house arrest. It will be remembered, ladies and gentlemen, that two weeks to the election, my entire campaign team was arrested. They were all rounded up in Kalangara Island, including myself. But for me, they placed me into a military chopper, airlifted me, and detained me right here in my house. Everybody else was taken and detained. 49 of these were charged in a military court and they were remanded. These people include Tuaha Ali, also known as Nubian Lee, my long-term singing partner and my closest friend. They include Daniel Oyerot, also known as producer Dan Magic, my music producer. They include Sebufu Edward, also known as Eddie Mutwe, my personal bodyguard. And close friend for very many years. They include Agaba Anthony, also known as Bobby Young. They include Ntege William, also known as Chuma Chayesu, one of our security team members. They include Mujuche Lukman, also known as Kampala Lukman, the official photographer of the National Unity Platform. They include Muden Tambi, a professional boxer and my personal coach who was treating me and taking me through the morning drills on the campaign trail. They include my young brother, Nyanzi William, also known as Mbogo. They include our good friend, known as Shuki Wakobi. They include Nadia Sheriff, also known as Don Sheriff, my personal assistant. They include Rachel Akiki, Nansove Safina, Mwanga James, Namwanje Jamila, Semakula Hassan, Charlie Pa Kenny, and Charlie Pa turned 18 while in prison. They include Nsubuga Muhammad, Matovu Adam, Tamale Ibra, Kafoko Stanley, also known as Kistan, Chivumbi Achireo, Nyanzi Kadu, Ismail, Manga Muzafaru, Chivumbi, Robert, also known, uh, and this one is a comedian with the Mighty Family. So you can imagine what these people are doing to the artists. They include Obicho, 
Bonnie, Sechiranda Samson, also known as Giant. They include Brian Damulira, also known as Museven Masgo, Katumba Robert, Namubiru Fatuma, Namuimba Joy, also known as Joy, Joy Strong, the one who was heading our first aid team. She was a nurse working as a health worker on our campaign team, and also including Tumushemerirwe Monika. They took Rutaya Oliver, Mpanga Charles, Chabagu Gosera, also known as Pimpa Productions. This one was our videographer, and he was in charge of all the videographics on our campaign trail. They include um, Mutalia, Mutalia Godfrey, uh, Musisi Benedict, Kalyango Baker, Mukasa Hussein, also known as Oshe. This is Chairman Nyanzi's son. They include Seninde John Bosco, Muganga Isma, Tamale Fahad, Murusha Bashir, and Unzima Joffrey, also known as Tawa. I must also mention, ladies and gentlemen, that many of our colleagues have been picked up from the houses in the neighborhood, my neighbor here, my brother-in-law, my wife's cousin, Rule David Wanika, also known as Selector David. He was picked up by the military two days to the election, and up to now, we don't know his whereabouts. Over 3,000 supporters of the NUP were picked up by security, and up to now, the whereabouts of most of them are still unknown. These and many other irregularities and fraudulent actions for which we have overwhelming evidence prove one thing. This has been the most fraudulent election in the history of Uganda. It is certainly 10 times, of course, more fraudulent than the 1980 election which Museveni hinged on to go to the bush and start a war which claimed more than half a million of the people of Uganda, our people. What happened, I must say, on the 14th of January is an insult. It is an insult to the memory of those that paid the ultimate price in the pursuit of freedom and democracy in Uganda. It is a mockery to democracy. Friends, Article number one, section four of our constitution provides that the people of Uganda shall express their will and consent on who shall govern them and how they should be governed through regular, free and fair elections. But for Museveni and his regime, they have eliminated the words free and fair. We therefore categorically and unequivocally reject the manufactured results of Museveni and Mr. Abakama and all the operatives. We reject those results. They were fabricated by Museveni and his operatives and read by Abakama. That was an insult to the voice of the people of Uganda and yes, an insult to democracy. They do not in any way represent what the people of Uganda said on the 14th of January. We have overwhelming evidence to that, and therefore, we reject those elections. We reject the results. Yes, we do. We call upon the people of Uganda to reject this mockery and to refuse to acknowledge Museveni as the winner of the 14th January polls. We defeated Museveni. We defeated them. And we were supposed to be announced as winners. But as usual, Museveni bulldozed the Electoral Commission, which was clearly not in charge of the election. They took over all local media stations, and as you saw, they announced fake results, which are not anyway connected to what actually happened at the polls. Ugandans must resist this treasonous attempt to forcefully impose, for Museveni to forcefully impose himself on us as president, because he is not. Resisting tyranny is not only right, but it is a duty for all the oppressed people. It is a duty that we must carry out. So I call upon 
all the people of Uganda. I encourage you to all of you use non-violent and legal means and ideas at your disposal to ensure that we engage in this fight for complete freedom. We have always said that people power is our power. The stolen votes belong to the people of Uganda. The people of Uganda must rise up, rise to the occasion and free themselves and their country from that small group of gunmen that do not care about the future of Uganda. Their only intention is to plunder Uganda and oppress the people of Uganda. Unlike Museveni, who unleashed untold violence and suffering on the people of Uganda in the 1980s, we choose non-violence. Our strategies are completely non-violent. We are committed to non-violence because we despise violence. That is what makes us different from Museveni. That is why we are fighting to remove a violent tyrant. Studies have shown in the past that non-violence is even much more effective in breaking violent dictatorships. I therefore encourage all of you citizens to take a firm stand against the Museveni regime. We can finally remove it. I guarantee that to you. And finally, many Ugandans are eager to hear our position on whether or not we shall go to court to challenge the thuggery and the fraud that Museveni and his cohorts unleashed on the people of Uganda. From the 17th of January, when the coup was announced, we have received numerous calls advising us on different strategies, and we are very grateful, ladies and gentlemen. Those who have been against going to court have told us that. They've told us it's a waste of time. They have argued that the composition of our Supreme Court as it is today, would not rule against General Museveni because he is simply the one that appointed all of them. They have made reference to the past cases filed by Dr. Kisa Besije, filed by Honorable Mama Mbabazi in the same courts and how the decisions were arrived at. They have argued that to go to court is to give Museveni another stamp of legitimacy. Then there are those who are advising us to go to court. Even when they are skeptical about the outcome, they think that we have an opportunity to file all this overwhelming evidence before a court of law. This they want us to do for present and future reference. They think we should exhaust all the present legal avenues and if they have any shortfalls, which many believe they do, then they are urging us to use this opportunity to expose them I must also add, add, ladies and gentlemen, that the regime has been actively trying to block us, to frustrate any attempts for us to go to court. One, they have held me captive without any charge for now eight days. They have intimidated all our polling agents, but most cru crudely, they have confiscated more than 4,000 of our declaration of result forms. These forms are crucial in an election petition and I believe that is why they chose to confiscate them. We have tasked the authorities to return these forms because they actually confess to having taken them but they are not responding. The leadership of the National Unity Platform is in the process of consulting stakeholders but most importantly consulting the common people because that is where we get our biggest support from. And in a few days, ladies and gentlemen, we shall communicate our decision to the nation about that matter. As regards my illegal house arrest, the police and the military have failed to explain why they are surrounding my house, why they've taken over my compound. They have failed to explain that. My legal team was here with me yesterday for the first time they were allowed to access me and they explained to me that they have filed an, uh, a case of habeas corpus in court and court is yet to determine that. Fellow Ugandans, I urge you to stay strong, stay confident, stay moving on. The harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. I can guarantee you we are removing 
a dictator as a generation. Nsaba mozikirize atera njo gire komu Uganda mkwano jange. Um, bana Uganda bana nge mwina. Mbala msiza kwa mulinyari ya mkama wafi katonda. Mirandi msanyifu. Ulokufuno mkisabuno. Ukusoke de dala. Ukuogira kwa jemuli. Ne wangu bade. Mamakaga fegeto lodwa. Hawa sirikali na hawa polisi. Mirandi msibe. Mirandi msibe makaga nge. Ne wangu bade. Nga sina 